So that's cool. That was Sub-Saharan Africa Outlook. All right, cool. So welcome to the Forex Start Today YouTube community of foreign exchange traders around the world that number approximately 12,500. Thank you for being here. This is where we align our satellites for the day. We will conduct technical and fundamental analysis and review the charts. We'll review the calendar. We have lots of news today. And most importantly, we'll support each other as currency traders. So let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. But please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. So like I said, thank you for being here today. <coughs> Please subscribe, please like, please leave comments. Why? First of all, if you subscribe, you'll be notified when I start webinars. Also, if you like the little thumbs up thingy, remember that thought? If you click that, uh, or even better, leave comments on videos, it tells YouTube this is quality content. So that's a good way to support the community. It's not like it doesn't make me money or anything, but it supports the community. It says YouTube promoter videos, which is most important. So please do that if you could. Uh, ask questions, take notes, get involved, treat your fellow currency traders with respect. And then, of course, please, please, please visit tradersway.com. They are the sponsor of our webinars. They make this available to you. This is content that you would normally pay money for. It streams to you live, so that's really cool. So make sure you pay it back and thank them because here's, like, think of it this way. A Trader's Way wants you to be successful as a trader, Think of it right off the bat. Trader's Way wants you to be a successful trader that trades long-term for years and years and years and you're profitable because then you keep trading. And then they provide a service and then you keep trading. They provide a service, you keep trading. And it's a symbiotic relationship. So they're making the first move and they're saying, hey, we're making ourselves vulnerable here. Give us an opportunity, right? So they've lit the candles, they've set the table, sit down. Have a drink. <laughs> let's we'll, let's dance. <laughs> so anyways, uh, it's a symbiotic relationship and they're making the first move. They're trying to help you be successful. Uh, help you, they're trying to help you become a successful currency trader and that's why I'm here. So uh, tradersway.com, open up a demo account and make the second move. Cool. Well, let's go. Nice trade last night on Swissy, uh, uh, Kiwi Swissy. Oh, you're welcome, Olin. Thanks for being part of the team. All right, so let's start here. Today is a busy, 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 busy day. Busy day. Busy, busy, busy. Retail sales, how bad can it be? Oh, it can be bad. Sherfung missed the trade. <laughs> Don't worry, there's always another trade. The worst thing you could do is chase it. By the way, it's kind of like technology. By the time you take the trade, it's already obsolete. There's probably two or three other ones that are setting up that are even better. So you just never worry about missing. There's always something better to be doing. So anyways, today, how bad will retail sales be? Well, we'll take a look at that. Okay. Canada getting destroyed. So oil back down to 20, which is, again, something we talked about uh, in the swing trading group last night or the day trading group last night. Okay. So anyways, uh, Bank of Canada has got to make a decision. Are they going to go lower? I don't know. We'll find out. Right. But right now, the Canadian dollar is being destroyed. Yeah. Destroyed. Okay. Beige book later this afternoon. Download it. Read it. Okay. By the way, I believe I explained the difference between the, the green book, the blue book, the beige book. I think that's in the, the uh, fundamentals course. Okay. And now what? And then uh, in the Asian session tonight, Aussie Jobs. And again, I've told you this a thousand times, but maybe you're new. That one I t typically scalp. So if it pops 50 pips, take the 50 pips. All right. But it's probably not going to be good. Just saying, just saying, it's probably not going to be a good number. Uh, so anyways, uh, if it provides a scalp, so be it. There's the link. 
forex.today slash forex news calendar. Ni hao ma. You are not alone. All right, so the, the, the big news has to be oil. <clears throat> okay, complicated chart. What do you see? Do you see many bullish setups? What do we know? 21 below the 55, technically bearish. Technically down. Okay. Then you use uh, price action. Down, 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 up, up, sell. 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 Okay. I don't know if it can go lower, though. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and there's a little bit of hiccup in there, so it might just be waiting for New York. But you got to be careful here um, because that's not beautiful. Uh, by the way, I had in my meditation this morning a vision of us in a conference. So there was hundreds of people in the room. Let's say a thousand people in the room. And I'm up on stage and I, I got one half of the room, like we're following charts on a big screen behind me. And I get one half of the room to say, down, 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 down. And then I get the other side to say, up, up. And then I yell, sell. <laughs> it was pretty fun. At first, everyone's looking around like, this is kind of stupid. But then I, it just, after a while, it got to be something that we repeat throughout the course. Right? Down, 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 up, up, sell. Down, 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 up, up, sell. Yeah. So, but I, for, even in the vision, at first, people are like, oh, okay, I guess we'll do it. But by the end of, like, I imagined it was a long conference, like multiple days. And at the end, we were just so used to, like, I show a chart. What do you guys see? Up, 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 down, down, bye. <laughs> and just practice that. And you just, Burn it into your brain. It was good. It was actually really good. Daniel needs to learn meditation. Yeah, I've been doing meditation uh, uh, probably close to 20 years now. Every single day. So anyways, uh, down, 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 uh, but be careful. So here's a different time frame. Here's daily. Not much different, huh? Just riding the 21, baby. Riding the 21. It's really hard to imagine, though. Um, I mean, there's like, <laughs> there's, I don't have data that goes back to 1979, I think, was the last time we were at this price. Okay. And that's before Nixon screwed everything up. So, 1979. Yeah, well, the problem, Mr. Highvold, is if everyone was rich, we'd be poor. Hey, Barry. So anyways, if we were all rich, we'd all be equally poor. <clears throat> yeah, so you, you, you don't want that. All right. Uh, so anyways, here's the kitty cat destroyed. OMG. So here's a day trade down. Clearly. Clearly. No good, no more. What is that actually? I guess I'm going to go back out a little bit. So very interesting, huh? Very, very, very interesting. This is very bad for Kitty Cat. This is definitely risk off. Okay. So we've had dollar weakness from the uh, Treasury, not from the Fed, from the Treasury. The Treasury's created dollar weakness. And so that's been sort of 
the trend in U.S. dollars, that kind of weakness. And CAD was already weak, but now you can see things have changed. So either the Canadian dollar is being destroyed or the U.S. dollar is getting strong. So we'll have to figure that out. Well, <clears throat> that's why you should maintain your bias. Oh, thank you for volunteering. <laughs> so remember, uh, tonight at 5 p.m. is the day trading group. And you're going to present trading ideas and I'm going to critique them. And then tomorrow in the swing trading group, uh, we're going to meet in groups again, groups of four and five swing traders, and you're going to collaborate with the group, create a group bias, and then present to the to the full team uh, what your group has decided is going to be the best trade for next week, what direction and why. Okay, so re remember... So we did that last week and I thought it was epically fun. <clears throat> All right. All right. So anyways, da -da 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 -da. so is this going to be a, a game changer? Yeah, could be a rabbit, could be. Because we don't need a regression with a regression. But the way that this channel is drawn, this regression channel, it's always it's already saying this is a breach. Okay, I always I always look toward you know the identifying support and resistance. Okay, what do we know? What do we know? I keep asking, what do we know? Okay. So perhaps that. Morning, Carlito. Okay. South African Rand continue, <clears throat> excuse me, continuing to tell us it's risk off. So this is one of the things that we talked about using exotics as day traders yesterday. And so is it stepping up? Is that going to be useful? So again, that's risk off people taking their money out of South Africa. So risk off would bring Bitcoin down. We already have a bearish Bitcoin trade plan. Well, isn't that interesting, huh? So we set this up a day or two ago, down, 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 up, up. Huh? The exact right price, the exact right time. Very cool. Thank you, Rizwan. Yeah. Coolio, huh? This is the sell zone. The daily sell zone for Bitcoin. It happened right at the right at the open. And you would also fundamentally, or let's say based on market sentiment, expect this as well based on what you see on the exotics.
What's Haveline next month? Definitely bullish on BTC, especially with Haveline next month. Jonathan says, uh, ha like having where they're they're cutting. They're c what does that mean? Their uh, number of BTC. Oh, is have. Oh, I see. All right. Uh, by the way, I think it trades extremely technically. Uh, let's take a look. Maybe not. Okay. Okay, monthly is not amazing, but nothing has been just because last month was so unprecedentedly huge. But let's take a look at another level. Yeah. Well, this one is an S1 R1 month. This is R1 central M2. Well, look, M2 to M3 central S1 to R1, R1, S1. It just looks like it's using the standard pivots. Is that right, Barry? What country are you in? No, but we can do that if you want. There's a, a queue in the United Kingdom at a bank? Really? Uh, how to install an EA? Uh, just look on YouTube. There's like got to be a thousand. Plus, there's a video training course on how to install them. That's weird, Barry. That's really weird. Um, yeah, just I'm sorry, I don't have time to to support how to install an EA. There are I there there's the course that I made available for like 14 bucks. There's got to be, you could Google YouTube how to install an EA. Uh, it's pretty easy. You drag it into the experts folder. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. It, should, you, it shouldn't be difficult to research. Platinum Palladium, uh, you see, that's stretching out of currency trader. Now you're trading, you're, when you're doing stuff like that, you're really now becoming more of a commodity trader. Even our oil, is. I look at it as money, so uh, I don't stretch too far. Someone asked about XRP. Thank you, Daniel. See you, Gammer Morning. What a great community, huh? Awesome. Thank you. Okay, it's very, very, very similar. Uh, so last week, you know, here's the buy zone for last week. Here's the target. Uh, here's the buy zone two weeks ago. Here's the target. This is the buy zone last week. This is the target, so you had to fold it into this one. And now this is a sell zone, okay? And I would imagine this is profit taking, so that if you're gonna buy it back, you're gonna probably try something like this next week. And for that, you're gonna need risk on. Uh, generally speaking, this is going nowhere, okay? But if you're just paying attention to this kind of move here, right now this is sell zone action. We knew that on um, when the market opened on Monday. 
So if you're a bear, you're looking at it this way, faux show, and then next month is going to look like that. And I'd probably stop at this uh, 0.14, uh, 0 0.1417. Okay, so Barry's friend. Bought a kilo of gold. I know people that have bought over a ton of gold. One metric ton. Well, actually, like dozens of tons, actually. Um, so anyways, yeah, so XRP, okay, fine, great. Let's go back to this. Yeah. Yeah, Jonathan. Many tons, actually. All right. So, well. So you can see longer has been up, shorter is down. Let's back this out a little bit. So it's a little low to buy, and the, and the sell zone was here, right? This is the sell zone for the day, but you don't want to sell that because you're selling too high, and you don't want to buy here now because you're kind of buying it too low, so you're going to have to decide how you're going to play this. And usually your decision has not to do with today. Ask not to, what to do today, but what you would like to do tomorrow. It just sounded like John F. Kennedy for a second there. Pakika and Harvard Yard. <laughs> so let's go to pound dollar for the news. A risk off de day developing here in the markets. I'm Alex Steele. Welcome to Bloomberg Daybreak Americas. Retail sales coming out in just about 30 seconds time. Uh, SME futures around the lows of the session. The dollar climbing as a safe haven of choice. Switch up the board. Take a look at what we're watching here. Uh, the move into treasuries. Yeah, that's firm. However, you're seeing some solid selling uh, in the peripheral bond market over in Europe. Now you have BTP yields up by about 12 basis points. Uh, Spain, Portugal also seeing higher yields uh, as well. Uh, you're also seeing a move uh, out of oil as that continues to grind lower. Uh, waiting for retail sales, but let's get to this number because it's cool. And that's the Empire Manufacturing number uh, for April coming in negative 78.2. Uh, retail sales numbers also out. The control group uh, coming in positive 1.7%. Um, that's usually the, the final demand that you wind up looking at. We had expected negative two, so that's interesting. I don't know what's going on with that. Nice. Um, on a month-on-month -month basis, happy if you numbers. Back out auto sales, though, you're still looking at a decline of 4.5%, uh, and backing mm. out auto and gas uh, down 3.1%. Uh, uh, overall, As you guys can see, this is an OOPCT setup. Sales by the most we've seen in March, and no <clears> doubt, uh, that will I think we talked about this last worse, night uh, in April and that Empire manufacturing number just really, really ugly uh, as well. Uh, joining me now to break it all down is uh, Bloomberg's uh, Michael McKee, our international and economics policy correspondent, as well as Constant Hunter, KPMG uh, chief economist. Uh, Mike, your takeaways from all the data so far. Well, I can tell you that the Empire numbers are the worst ever. Uh, they're the biggest drop ever uh, to the lowest level ever. That's more than twice as much as Empire had ever fallen during the Great Financial oh, well. Crisis. Oh, wow. Maybe uh, we've country. never closed as all of New York said, City down before. Basically, the story that the economy just came to a dead stop <clears> in March <throat> is true. I'm looking through the uh, retail sales numbers right now, and uh, it does look like um, we are... Uh, 
uh, well, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to parse out the month over month numbers. Here we go. Uh, the uh, monthly sales numbers, motor vehicles and uh, sales deal uh, parts were down 3.9%, which uh, was kind of expected because we had some of those numbers already. Uh, the, most of the uh, other retailers down between 4 and 5%. However, uh, grocery stores, you were expecting this, up 11.6% yeah. on the month. Everybody went out shopping for that. Clothing and accessories down 16%. Uh, this is the Easter month. Wow. You would have been buying uh, new frocks. Uh, you weren't uh, during the month. General merchandise stores, department stores down 11.7%. Uh, food services and drinking places. This, to me, is a bit of a surprise. Um, when, uh, oh, I'm, you know, Alex, I gave you some of the wrong numbers here. I was giving you the three-month numbers. These are even worse. I'll, I'll take all the blame here. Uh, f clothing stores down 50.7%. Motor vehicles down 23.7%. Wow, China was Food down 90 at down this time of their shutdown. Percent. Grocery stores were up 29%. Uh, sorry that the data comes out in a sort of truncated form now because it's only on the web. Uh, so we're looking at some historically awful numbers. There's no other way to put it. And I think what we're going to see uh, with the um, more than 8% decline overall is uh, we finally get the first quarter GDP number into negative territory. We'll see what the, uh, the people Very like cool. the Atlanta Fed GDP now trackers come up with. But uh, this is... Uh, Basically, as I said, with Empire confirming dead stop for the economy except for grocery stores during the month of March. Yeah, and, and I mean, just it's hard to digest all this news at one time, too. Mike, you're doing a great job. Really appreciate that. Um, uh, Constance, I know you're joining us as well. We knew. Oh, sorry, we had to lay you off, Mike. <laughs> with Empire Manufacturing, <laughs> negative six, uh, 78 sorry, buddy. Percent retail sales. Uh, and had nothing to do with that time. You screwed everything up on TV. Anyway, so what are they talking about? Well, let's let's take a look, eh? Oh, for show. Oh, for show. <clears throat> Percentage change in retail and food and services. Uh, yeah. <laughs> huh. Cool. <clears throat> so the U.S. Census Bureau conducts the Advanced Monthly Retail Sales and Food Services Survey to provide an early estimate of monthly sales by kind of business for retail and for food service firms located in the United States of America. Each month, questionnaires are mailed to a probability sample of approximately 5,500 employer firms selected from a larger monthly retail trades survey. Advanced sales estimates are computed using a link relative estimator. Blah, 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 blah. Cool. <laughs> See, this is what he read. So this is what he should have been reading, right? Motor vehicle and parts dealers down 25%. Clothing stores down 50%. Alcohol sales, I'm sure, are up, actually. Never thought about looking if, if they did that. They don't, really. Okay. Cool. I'll, put, I'll post a link if you guys want it. La 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 la. La 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 la. Ba -ba 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 -da. Okay, cool. So we actually talked about this trade last night in the in the live group, and we 
had this as an OOP CT back to the CPP. And I think there's a little bit of support in there just before the central, I think. Well, maybe not. Okay, let's go to the kitty cat. La 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 la. So the next one's going to be Kitty Cat. Retail sales down. Not so bad if you take out autos. Yeah, I was wondering if what people should do here, like if you should go buy a Beamer or something. But nah, cars don't make money. I like buying things that make money. So anyways, let's go down into here. And that's what we're looking at. I guess there was one. All right. So I do remember doing this. Cool. Okay. And then the, oops, cancel that. Okay. And this is sort of the, the next one that's expected. Does anyone remember from last night? Was this the one where we did the OOP CT? I think it was, wasn't it? Olin says it was. Yeah, it, it seems like it was. So you have to ask yourself where you're going to go next. If you're a bull, you're kind of thinking this. Okay. As your plan A and as your plan B. And if you're bear, you're going to have some challenges for sure at those prices. And you'll probably want something like this next week. But that's a long ways to go. So right now, if you're a bear... You had a chance to sell high. Now you're low, so you can't sell it as a bear. So, uh, and then bulls are getting at the ready. Right? So we'll see if, if the uh, U, uh, USD weakness is over and if we're going back to sort of the central bank leading the way for the currency and not the, um, not the treasury. So just take a look. So the next level, as we already know, is way up here. Long ways to go. Okay. So if you're going to change this. La, 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 change it to bullish mode. Okay. So no matter what. All of this is irrelevant because if you're not on it now, then you don't deserve to be on it now. Right? So you shouldn't chase it higher is what I'm trying to say. So let's say this bombs out at this uh, 141. Not that it will. It looks like 142 is going to be the bigger number. But really what you're looking for is tomorrow would look something like this. So you have, right? Okay. 
So there's that. You can drop into a smaller time frame and try to like scalp your way up. But you still need price action. So there's a bigger one here on a one minute, right? And a smaller one here on a one minute. But you'd, I would still imagine this 141 is going to be some level of psych. So on a smaller time frame, the, you know, you probably still want like that. Okay. You have to be careful. Like at the end of the day, you know, you want to buy low at support. So can I argue that 141 is support? Can I argue that that's a low price? No. So really before I even have a legitimate chance to buy this, it's got to drop at least 20 pips. Uh, yeah, Kyo, that's the uh, that, that's the fee. So, anyways, no matter if you're going to day trade this, intraday trade this, right, like a market open type thing, if you're going to scalp this, you still want to buy low. So. The way I look at it is this 141, no matter how you define it, is not low. And if it doesn't come down and leaves me in the dust and it goes from 141 and goes higher, couldn't care less. It's not what I do. Okay. You got that? You always ask yourself, who's the boss? Are you going to buy this because it's leaving you in the dust and you're going to chase it? Well, then you're not the boss. Okay. So you say, look, I'm the one in control here. I'm the boss. So it, for you, for me to buy USD CAD, it's got to come down. That's that. If it doesn't come down, I'm not interested. If someone else wants to buy it at 141, good luck. It's irrelevant to me. Okay. Well, Raj, the way I hear it is places like Iraq and Libya are producing oil at 100% capacity. Nobody's cutting anything. So everyone's beating each other up. It's a war. It's going to get ugly. Your customer says, uh, price going up does not mean someone else is buying. Well, yes and no. First of all, if someone else is paying too much, I couldn't care less. Let's say you want to buy a million dollar house. 
and you're in negotiations for it and you're like, yeah, okay, a million. Okay. I'll, uh, okay. I'll buy this house for a million. Someone comes in and says, well, I'll pay 1.5 million. Does that mean you're going to have to pay 1.6? No, you don't have to do Jack. You're like 1.5. Shit. <laughs> You can have it, bro. Okay. So someone else buying high is irrelevant to me. Okay. If someone wants to pay too much, by all means, you can have it. The other thing is, no, this going up does not mean people are buying. It might, it might be the case, but this going up could be people getting out of short positions. Okay. Jesus, Jesus fan said, hey, sir, I enjoyed the taking control of your trading course. Re has really improved your trading. Right on, huh? Uh, Gallup says, uh, why can't oil? Yeah, oil can go anywhere it wants. The thing is, what I'm saying is, if... OPEC countries are still producing 100% capacity, then it can go lower. Is that right, Anthony? Do, am I coming across slow these days? Gee whiz. It's disconcerting. Lucas brings up a good point. Do you think having cheap fuel will help the economy rebound? Well, if no one's driving to work, then it doesn't matter what you're paying. Well, thank you for being honest with me, Anthony. I appreciate that. Is that right, guys? I'm that bad? Oh, my God. Sorry. Let me drink my coffee. <laughs> Your customer says, didn't they agree to cut? Well, what they agreed to or not agreed to, it ain't happening now. Okay. Okay. So remember, stop listening to the news. Do your own work. Okay, this is a great place to start. Nothing go, nothing can go wrong go. I'm in the Congo. Very cool. <laughs> so the the other one I like is uh, uh Okay, this is the US oil data and they give you some pretty nice charts. Um, I, I get the weekly one. Um, where do they put it on the website? I don't know. I get the weekly report emailed to me. No, we, uh, weekly petroleum status. This must be it. So 
So here you can pull up things like even storage capacity. Okay. Uh, the monthly reports are also very good. Okay. So <clears throat> you can ask yourself, <laughs> right? Here's the stockpile of oil in the United States. Isn't that nice? Okay, so that you can get all this data and you can take a look at it and really truly become an uh, expert. Oops. Now this is the counterpart to OPEC. So when OPEC created the cartel, it was to support the producers of oil and then the consumers of oil, aka the Western world, start, built their own OPEC, but it's called the IEA. So most people don't know anything about the IEA, but their, their countries, like I said, typically uh, OECD countries, they have created strategic petroleum reserves, and the, all the members of the IEA have these petroleum reserves, okay? to counteract, so all these countries, oops, I just had it. So these countries have gotten together. That's not, I don't think that's true. Let's do it this way. So anyways, so looking at it this way, these countries have, have stockpiled oil in case OPEC cuts production radically to jack up prices. Well, these countries don't wanna pay high prices. So they've had an agreement as a cartel to stockpile oil. So if, if OPEC cuts and reduces supply, these countries already have supply or can share supply with each other. So Canada and the United States and the UK and Norway could provide oil to everybody else to offset what was lost at OPEC. So it's the counter, it's the nemesis to, to OPEC. And so many, most people don't, most people know OPEC, most people don't know IEA. So you can, you can use this uh, website as well to truly find information. And this is already above whatever reporter on whatever newspaper or TV show you watch. This is already beyond what they're doing, okay? So there's lots of stuff you should be reading here and you should stop doing the other stuff, <laughs> right? And then you could even go to like um, Royal Dutch Shell has some good information. Okay. Uh, Exxon Mobil is pretty good. I think it's Exxon. Um, they do some interesting things. Um, it may be Royal Dutch Shell. What, what's another big oil company? Well, see, it just gives you the numbers. There's more going on here. So like, if you're truly paying attention, these com these companies tell you uh, some pretty interesting things, right? So here's your energy and carbon consumption reports. Um, you can see how much they're spending on research and development, for example. Um, there's... Lot, there's lots of interesting speeches that they 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 do as well. So there's an annual one where the CEO comes out. It tells you the the outlook for the next year. So, anyways, you can take a look at some of these. 
Oil and money conference. Isn't that like the best thing ever? I want to go to the oil money conference. Right? Uh, there should be some other ones. Or maybe I'm thinking BP. Because I didn't see what I was looking for there. B, uh, BP Global. Yeah, I think it might actually be British Petroleum I'm thinking of. Um, stupid European nonsense. Every site I have to agree to cookies now. Come on, dude. Uh, so, like, maybe even in the video library there'll be one in here. Uh, so the, the CEO will come out and give you an outlook Well, see, like, even this is interesting, right? Energy Illustrated. Some very basic reports on the whole oil industry. Like, why would you not want to start there, too, if you're, if you're trying to learn how to be an a energy complex trader? Watch this. Like, it might be made for kids or something, but you, it's a great place to start. It looks like there's a series of videos uh, on the, the whole energy complex. So, like, to know the difference between upstream and downstream seems to be uh, something that you should know. Subscribe to their magazine. See, right? Annual meeting in Florence. Reimagining energy, reinventing British Petroleum. See, these are very, you should watch these things. They really give you uh, an outlook beyond what you read in the newspaper. Who are these players, right? What are they doing? What's the future for these guys? And they'll tell you things like they're assuming uh, uh, diminishing demand or something like that. And I, anyways, there's t so much you can be doing. Right on YouTube, everything. Oh, Kyok, I, I can't read all your messages. I'm doing stuff, but I told you if the price is the price, the price is the price. The swing trading group has a fee. You have to pay the fee. So, sorry, I can't read all your, yeah, but imagine that. Yeah, so you have to decide. Do you want to join the group or do you want to buy courses? Do you want to buy videos or do you want to join the course or, or the group? So. All right. Uh, la 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 la. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So, just I'm looking at gold this way. So remember, this this was we needed it to go higher to sell, and it's too low to buy. You understand that? It's too low to buy, and it needed to go higher to sell. So it's kind of interesting if it ends up doing this. That would be good because then tomorrow would be a better sell. And the sell zone tomorrow is going to be here. Well, Daniel, you can also look at what direction, uh, let's say, higher risk investments are going. 
is money going into junk bonds or is money going into uh, emerging markets? You know, that kind of stuff. Oh, is that what it is? H H H H. I just had the programmer look at it yesterday and confirm that it works. Uh, someone says, uh, "Sorry, who I missed it? So, was it not a perfect sell already? Uh, in Asia, it was, right? And then pre-London, it was. So Asia, pre-London." Right. But here's the caution. Here's the caution. Let me, and I did discuss this, uh, I believe, yesterday. OK, let's let me go in here. OK. So is it a perfect sell? Sort of. OK, this is a perfect sell. This is a perfect sell, but in a downtrend. OK. So let's go back to this, Cal. Is this a downtrend? Right. So it's a perfect sell in the wrong market, right? So one of the things we talked about yesterday in the day trading group was uh, having the patience to wait. And there's a difference between just selling it because it's a, a pivot point or selling it because it's a down pivot point or something, right? So what you want to do, guys, right? So again, think of it as a bear. You're a bear, you're a bear, you're a bear. These are all the selling prices. OK. And the first part is, OK, you're a bear, but it's going up and it's above the sell zone. So that's not good. So the next thing is, well, you want to sell well prices below the sell zone. Right. So you're like, OK, this is good. Right. No, it's not good. Now, it can be. It's just not a day trade. You might be scalping this or doing some other market open stuff, uh, just smaller time frame stuff, right? Intraday trading it down, which is fine. And you can see we, we got the linear regression confirming it. But it's not a day trade until we have a downtrend. And for that, I need, I need a lower high print, okay? At least once, right? So this is a higher high. So th if this... Right. If this stays low today, then that would be sort of a lower high. And then what we do tomorrow is probably sell this like there tomorrow. OK, and this is what we were talking about back here. Like that's the exact sort of a bear does want to go low, rise up into the sell zone and sell. That's legit. It's just not a day trade. Now, the next day trade would be this. OK, and so we were talking about this 12 hours ago where, OK, you can totally sell this, but it's risky right now because it's not a lower low and it's not even a lower high yet. So now that we're down here, we are lower than the roll reversal here. This used to be resistance. It could act as support. Right. So like going back in, uh, tw you know, 12 hours ago, someone wanted to sell this. I'm like, well, you could. But it's still, oh, come on, it's still technically a roll reversal up. Now, a bear could very easily lose sight of that and be so eager to sell, they forget what the bulls still want to do. OK, so to prevent any sort of mistake on that, you let it make the lower low. OK. And then you sell the lower high. And it, right, and, and it may have already done it, in fact, right? So this is what you'd probably be looking at this day, this time tomorrow.
uh, uh, please send that email again. I honestly get over a hundred emails a day. So I, I'd have to go back a thousand emails to get, I, I can't, but just send me another one and I'll see what's going on. But I just had a programmer check that like literally yesterday afternoon to confirm that it works. So if you're talking about you're in, you did the beta sign up, you're, you, did, you signed up for the COVID videos, and now you're in the video course and, it, and there's a button there that says upgrade to the live room and you click that and then you try to upgrade and then it doesn't work, then, well, it should because I just had that confirmed. If not, I will scream at the programmer again, okay? Uh, Lucas, it doesn't get lost. Um, I have every email I've ever received since I think about 1998. Okay. So it doesn't get lost. It's just, I just have so many. I literally have millions of emails saved. But, um, but I can't. I just won't have the time. I just don't have the thought process or capacity right now to like look it up and find it. So if it's important, you gotta, you gotta fight for it. Right? No, I know. I know what you meant, but, um, I just, I don't have the time. So my days usually, and I don't know, I hate talking about myself. Uh, so I don't even want to talk about it anymore. Um, but this is what I'm thinking. Okay. So, Here's where we were earlier. This is yesterday when we met. And I'm like, I know what you're thinking as a bear. Yes, this is a sell zone. Not enough for me. So I need the lower low, lower high. And really, so 12 hours ago, we were talking about 12 hours from now. Now, here's the interesting thing. If you're doing sort of a market open, New York open type trade, you might be front running the move. But that's not a day trade. Okay, your front run is you already know you got the lower low roll reversal. You already know that. It shouldn't be a shocker. Okay. And so you're taking it down this way now, and you're not going to wait for Asia. And if that happens, it just simply changes how Asia will work. So this will be down. We have the new lower low. Okay. Then this will drop to about here. Plus, you'll have the new roll reversal here. So then tonight in Asia, we will do that and it'll make a lower low than we currently see. That's all. It just changes that. So if you're a day trader, though, and you're a bear, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. You. Oh, my gosh. You need to have traded that roll reversal for sure. And if you don't know what that means, then you need to take the. Um, well, probably a day trading course, but I'd say the uh, price action course should fix that, right? Pure mathematics always takes those, yeah, front runs, yeah. Brinsley says, I say if it's below, it should trend down. Well, yeah. Well, this is actually neutral, though. Okay, so so you're not wrong. I mean, you're you're in fact you're probably right. Okay, but there's more going on before that happens. So like the market technically was already bearish right there on this time frame. Well, you can't look at higher time frames, Cal, because they won't be. They're lagging. The higher time frame you go, the more laggy they are. Okay? So you have to decide, based on fundamentals more, what you want to be, and then find your time frame that has congruency with your bias. So if you're a bull, you're going to buy this at 1700 Okay. If you're a bear, you're going to look at smaller time frames and trade into the 21 and exit at 1700. Okay.
But notice, you know, it, it falls for days, right? But that's all we're doing here. So notice on this four hour chart, if you back out here, this has been bullish since March 23rd. Okay. And then I call this sort of the reset. So after the cross, you wait for it to pull back into the moving averages. There's your second buy. Up, 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 down, down. Third buy off the 21, which is also a roll reversal. So again, price action. And then up, 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 down, down. Again, we're looking at the 21. There's a roll reversal way down here. So you have plan A is kick off 1700 as a four hour 21 or kick off the roll reversal down here off the 55, which would give you caution for a double top. Yep. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. But I guess what I was saying, John, was uh, some people would be selling this tomorrow with this anticipation. So looking at it from here doesn't confirm that. Okay. So you kind of already have to be a bull or a bear. And that is more fundamental than anything. Okay. So you look at this and say, was there any sign that this was going to come down? Yeah. Okay. Here's the buy zone. Based on the buy zone, here's the target. This is an exit. Okay. It happened early in the month. So this is an out. This is an in. Okay. And which sets up a counter trend. So this is an OOP. This is a CT. Which means we'll have probably a significant down. Well, for the significant down to occur, you have to breach this, pull back, drop into here, three wave up, and then back down. Okay. If you're a bull, you're going to ignore all of that. And you're just going to buy it off of here. Okay. But this is definitely a bullish exit. Okay. So, for example, we we're talking about the, uh, something like this, but does this mean people are selling? No. Not yet. What it could just mean is everyone that bought it down here is exiting. So the right buy 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 take profit take profit take profit take profit buy 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 buy. Okay. I think really it becomes bearish when this happens. So you it comes down to here. So that's a bigger play. This is a four hour. That's a fundamental play. So you could scalp it down. Remember, I was saying you can you could be trade. You can be doing something else. It just isn't a day trade yet. So day traders are going to wait for an, a lower high, lower low. And this is where it becomes a day trade. And now you're selling it at like 1730 and you're going for 1630. Well, probably 1680 or something, but okay. And, and that allows for this to set up properly because the way I look at it is this is profit taking. This is bulls leaving, not bears selling. And then the next move, uh, the next lower high, this area here is actually bears selling. This is bulls exiting 
This is bear selling. So this is exiting. This is actual selling. Okay. You see the difference? Okay, so how to set it up? If you're going to be if you're going to be a bear, this is where you scalp, and then this is where you day trade. So scalp, 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 take profit, allow it to fade back up, day trade, day trade, day trade. If you're a bear, okay. And you should know this without a shadow of a doubt that that's an exit zone. Cool. And you should also know without a shadow of a doubt this is going to be a buy zone, this retickle of 17. Okay. All right. Let's go to one of the things we did yesterday was we did a few Swissies. Oh, thank you, guys. Here's one we set up yesterday as a down. Okay. Wasn't this chart though? We had it on a different one. I th I, I remember uh, PSAR on it. Oh, you know, we had it on the exotics. So we looked at exotics and then based on what we saw in the exotics, we started selling Kiwi Swissy. So we saw USD Turkish Lira up, USD Mexican Peso up, Euro Turkish Lira up, USD South African Rand up, which told us down on Kiwi Swiss Franc. Uh, shalaka laka, uh, shalaka laka. And we've even gone through our target. Right? That was nice, right? Okay. So yeah, so this is the question. Is it going to do this tomorrow? Well, we'll take a look at that later. So remember, guys, we're moving the day trading group from 8 p.m. Eastern time to 5 p.m. Because it takes me another hour, hour and a half to upload all the video, download the video, encode the video, upload the video to YouTube, move the video from YouTube to the course. That takes me another hour and it just, it's, it's hard. Um, so I told my wife and kids that we're going to have to start eating our dinner late, more like seven o'clock at night. So my wife and my children and I are moving our feeding schedule. And this will make it a little bit easier. So I won't have to stay up so late every night. But also for those in Europe, um, you know, you can go to bed before, you know, the morning doves start cooing, right? So that, right? So that I think is easier for 90% of people. So I tried to send out an email yesterday and the server was over overloaded and, and wouldn't send and all that kind of stuff. So I'll, I'll send something today. I'm in the United States of America. Okay. So anyway, so we'll have to look at that at the uh, at the close, that rollover. And so 5 p.m. is rollover, by the way. So it is technically the start of a new day. So if you guys are interested in the courses or the live trading group, the link is below the video. Just go ahead and click that. Also, the vast majority of you guys watching the video right now have not clicked the thumbs up button. May I please ask for you to click the, the thumbs up button? All it does is tell YouTube this is quality content. It doesn't benefit any, me personally in any particular way, but it, it would help promote the videos. So please click the thumbs up. Just take a second, take less than a second. Click the thumbs up. Thank you very much. 
All right, so let's move on to something different. Um, we can break down some of these things, like we can do an exotic, for example. Okay, so we can talk about how risk off, right? Oh, and thank you for subscribing, guys. Appreciate that. Can I ask you also, subscribe on my other YouTube channel too? I'm trying to get us over 10,000 so I can unlock some features. www.youtube.com slash fxbootcamp. Would you subscribe over there too, please? Once I get over 10,000 on that one, um, it'll allow me to do some cool new things. And by the way, there's like, I think 4,000 videos on that other channel. 4,000. 4,000 videos associated with my work. So maybe take the time to do that. Okay, so let's break this down. Euro-Turkish layer going up, that is risk off. Risk off is what's happening in the world right now. Everyone's bringing money home because they're worried uh, <laughs> that they can't feed their kids. All right, so that is a fundamental point of view. So from that, you would be bullish on Euro-Turkish Lira. You might not like the Euro, but it's better than the Lira, is how the world is thinking about it right now. So let's move this to a 15-minute chart and look at how this is set up for day traders over the last few days. Check it out. This is a buy zone for a trader, but we notice just like that other pair I showed you that wasn't quite ready for shorting, this isn't quite ready for buying. It's technically okay, but mm, the trend is down in that period, okay? But the next one is perfectly fine. This is the, uh, this is the move where you go up, 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 down, down. This is the buy zone. Notice that you know this a day in advance. Then the next one, up, 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 down, down, okay? Not only do you know that's a buy zone, you knew when you were up here that that was a buy zone. You knew hours and 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 hours in advance that if it drops down to here, you're going to buy it. Plus, of course, it's a role reversal as well, as it always will be. Then it goes up, and today it's so bearish, so risk off today that there's no pullback. Okay? So that's an out of position type trade. So you still let it drop, and then maybe we pick it up here, okay? So right now it's stuck at 7.5. Now this might be interesting for bears, so we'll have to take a look at that. But between now and um, let's say Tokyo open, so we need London to close, we need New York to close, and then we need Tokyo to open, you get something like this. Other things to look for are psych levels, FIB levels and roll reversals, which is from price action. So you also want to look here, okay, as a buy zone, you want to look here. And so this lower one is not going to happen today, but it might be important in the future, okay? If this is still going to remain bullish, oops, okay, if it's going to remain bullish, you're going to kind of do this. But I'm worried because of the psych level, okay? And if it comes down here, uh, it's sort of better, but it'll take a day. So it, you'll give up a day. Up, 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 down, down. You'll give up tomorrow. And then uh, Friday, you'll buy this into the new week. Would be something like that. Okay? Or you override the pivots, and you, and you which is fine in this situation and you just simply do it this way, okay? Pure price action, roll reversal, doesn't get any easier than that, okay? And all you're doing is trading risk off. You're betting that uh, emerging markets, in this case, Turkey, is going to have trouble uh, with debt, okay? So Turkey's borrowed a lot of Euro at low interest rates. Will they even have enough euro in the vaults to pay their debts? Maybe, maybe not. And by the way, thank you very much, everyone, for subscribing. Lots of people have been subscribing. I appreciate that. Like I said, please uh, subscribe over at the other YouTube channel as well. 
FX Bootcamp. Can't copy it. Hang on. Cool. And there's a there's a free training course on the FX Bootcamp YouTube channel as well. Make sure you take an opportunity to look for that in the um, playlists. So click on playlists, and you'll see one that says a, a free forex training course. I think it's like I don't know an hour and a half long. Alex, Alejandro says they have the most foreign debt. Uh, that, okay, well, that's interesting. Um, the, the issue isn't the debt level per se. It's their ability to have euros in the vault. Okay. So right now it's a vicious cycle for them. So that's all risk off, okay? Now keep in mind, I made a I made a thousand percent return on investment selling this uh, earlier this year. I think I sold. Was it here? Yeah, I sold here. I made zero pips. Okay, I made zero pips on that trade. None. I sold here, I moved my stop to break even. I held it for 10 months. I made zero pips. What was my return on investment? I held it for 10 months. I was short the whole time. I got knocked out at break even zero month, uh, 10 months later, so I made no pips. What was my ROI? You guys remember? One. One thousand percent return on investment. Ha 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 True story, true story, true story. I made no pips, but collected 1,000% return on investment just in swap. Isn't that funny? And then over the weekend, if you guys saw my video that I did on the FX Bootcamp channel, uh, where I went through the newspaper and stuff, we saw a hedge fund manager that has 3.8 billion. He lost 15% last month, right? So what was that? $500 million. And he was bragging about he only lost $500 million because how diversified he was. <laughs> You're like, that's amazing. You're so good. You only lost 15%. Oh, thank you. I should be thanking. I should be children should be throwing roses at your feet because you're so awesome. <laughs> you're like, really? Currency traders are supposed to make money every month. doesn't matter if the market's up or down, but anyways. Cool. All right, let's move. I got to move. Give me the juice. Well, I'm still amazed half of you guys have not clicked the thumbs up button. Come on, guys. Don't be rude. All right. Let's go to... Let's do more Swissies. Nah, yeah. yeah. Let's do a couple more Swissies. Let's get off at ex exotics. Let's go back to Swissies. Okay, let me get... okay stock market just opened, by the way. All right, so that's euro dollar for some reason. I don't want to look at that right now. Kiwi Swissy, we already did. Okay. This is off a monthly sell zone. That could be interesting. This could continue all the way down to 115. I'm not saying it is. I'm saying if you're a bear, you have the right price. 
And if you get in bearish setups off of this price, then you would be expecting a minimum down to 115 as a first move, okay? So that's pound Swissy, Kiwi Swissy we already did, Aussie Swissy. So Aussie Swissy on a day trading basis was trending up, very obviously trending up, lots of great trades, and now is very much set up for a bearish move. That's why yesterday or the day before, we already marked this area as the future sell. Not the past, right? Future. So we were looking for, okay, lower high, lower low, lower high, and that would be the sell zone. Okay. Let's change this and look at a higher time frame. I'm going to move it to a confluence, monthly and uh, weekly pivot points. So where are we now? It's a little elevated. This is a little too high. Okay, so that gives me some concern. But we're back below both the weekly and the monthly M3. So if it remains bearish off of the, uh, off the 200 EMA, then between now and next week, we'll be selling it off of um, 61.50. And the short-term target would be 56. The longer-term chart uh, topic would be even lower. My concern, and we did talk about this in the day trading group yesterday, is very often on inside months, inside months, the R1 and S1 take precedence. So there's a little bit of worry here that it works its way up and then works its way down. So don't be so sure is all I'm saying. So if you're a bear, you like the lower high, lower low, and you would sell the lower high again. You would, but just don't be so certain, okay? There's a little bit of this still left in the market, okay? It might just do that yet, but I like the lower high and I like the roll reversal. So if you were already a bear, you have to recognize that the, the, it's not a perfect top, it's not perfect weekly, it's not perfect monthly, but you do have the lower high, lower low, so you would be compelled to do that. But it's not perfect, it's a little bit of slopping, okay? So be careful, use your stop. And then go over Kitty Cad. We know Kitty Cad's now getting destroyed, okay? Let's back this out a little bit, okay? We have this as a monthly sell zone, I believe. Let's change it to Confluence and then work our ba way back in. Let's double check why I have that. Uh, oh yeah, it's, so it's a monthly sell zone. So that's why I did this, guys. Okay, this whole area, if you're a bear, makes you want to sell. Then you look at psych level, so you really wanted to sell 70. So let's take a look at that. Change this. And you want to look at 0.7. Oh, 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 I like to really refine it. That's right there. So you, the closer you are to 70, the more you want to sell it. Up, 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 down, down, up, 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 down, down. So your next play between now and Monday, probably, is what you're thinking is this, okay? If you're a bear, that's what you're thinking on CAD Swissy, you're anti-CAD, you're anti-oil, you're risk off. Okay, so that doesn't put you into a trade tomorrow. So now you drop in and say, I know where I am. I know where I'm going. I know what I want to do. Now I'm just trying to find the price and the time at which I want to do it. And you want to sell off 69. Okay, that's the first one. The second one is you want the roll reversal, which is also about 69. So your, your day trade for tomorrow would probably look something like this. Okay, and that gets you down to one standard deviation from the mean. Okay, so from this period, from, from the beginning of April to now, the average, the mean price is, is about uh, 63. The standard deviation from the mean gets us up to uh, 70. And the standard deviation below the mean gets us down to, to 68. And that's, that's where we'd be probably by uh, Friday. 
and then we'll have to figure things out from there. What do you think, guys? Okay. What do I think about contrarian trading? Well, first of all, my name is Wayne McDonald. Nice to meet you. I am a global macro trend trader. So counter trend trading uh, by definition is uh, higher risk, lower reward. I'd rather you temper that with a little bit of technical analysis so that you're not counter trend, but you know, see the good thing about trading guys, once you know how to trade, you know where the bulls are going to buy and you know where the bears are going to sell. So a counter trend would be, you think this is going up, but you know bears are living up here. So you are short term counter trend back into the longer term, longer trend. So you're short term, short, okay? But you're long term, long. So you're, so you're only counter trending as you wait for the next bullish, okay? But most people are not that good in their first or second or third or fourth year. They think they are, but they're not. Okay, can be done, but the way I define it in my book is you're you're taking um, you're you're taking twice the risk because you're selling in an uptrend doesn't make sense to me, but okay, and you're getting half the reward. Okay, so for example, if you believe this was an uptrend, you you shorted here, you're just going back to the mean. Okay, but if you did, right, so selling is just as difficult as buying. So you sell here and your your most realistic target is back to the mean. So you get that. But if you're a trend trader, you're going to buy it and expect to be in it for a very long time. Right. So I'd rather you, as Daniel says, the what I teach people is to create a long-term fundamental or long-term technical bias. Okay, that gets your bias first. And then you use technical analysis to confirm or deny the market conditions toward your bias. Meaning, one, if you're a bull, then two, is the market bullish? And if the answer is no, then stop. Why the heck would you trade if you're a bull and the bear, and market is bearish? And most of you guys have already tested, if you don't have a bias, and you're, every single day you're trying to figure out, is the market going to go up today? Is the market going to go down today? You've already discovered at best your break even as a trader, and more likely you don't, you're just not profitable. Uh, how do you, what do you think is the best way to trade a small account? The same way you trade a large account. Trade planning, trade planning, trade planning. And there's only two things that determine how much money you make. One, your assets under management. So by the way, if you don't have a lot of money in your trading account, you're not going to make a lot of money. You're, you're undercapitalized. So if you're really good, why don't you put together a five-year trade plan, trading your small trading account conservatively, with steady returns and low volatility, and then convince friends, family, and fools to invest with you and raise your assets under management and then continue trading with consistent returns and low volatility. Okay, the second thing is time. So do the math, guys. Bust out an Excel spreadsheet and say, if you make uh, 5% a month, every single month, and do it for um, uh, monthly for three years, and then do it yearly for 10 years. So you're going to have, basically, you have to make a spreadsheet where you go 36 months, compounding, you're not paying yourself any money, by the way, don't pay yourself any money. You don't have any money in your account, so why take any out? Don't worry about it. Pay yourself 5% a month 
compounding for 36 months and then break it out uh, from there, break it out um, from you know year four year, uh, to year 10, okay? And you'll, what you'll discover is how much money you start with will dictate how much money you end up with. And then of course, if you can actually maintain this for long periods of time, will determine how much money you make. And of course, if you do the math, if you start with $1,000, you'll probably end up with 10 million. But the problem is someone with only $1,000 typically doesn't have a 10 year plan. But what you need is patience and discipline. And maybe in three or four years of you trading with low volatility and consistent returns, 5% a month, sometimes it's 3%, sometimes it's 6%, sometimes it's 1%, but you're slowly, because you don't take much risk over time, have steady returns, you can show that to someone that does have money but doesn't have time or expertise, and they'll say, oh, I have money but I don't have time or expertise, what if I gave you some money? And now you just jacked up your AUM and continue. Just continue, just continue. But here's, here's how, here's probably what you get pitched on, on YouTube. They probably pitch you that you can turn your thousand dollars into $10,000 quick. And all you have to do is scalp. Uh, you don't have to understand fundamentals. Uh, everything is in the price. All you need is technicals. All you need is short term charts. Somehow that's going to reduce your risk. And you can make lots of little trades and compound that up and make a lot of money. Uh, it doesn't work, by the way. And you know it doesn't work. There is no such thing as get rich quick. It doesn't exist. You can't scalp your way into a yellow Lamborghini, trust me. It's a fool's errand. It's a dream. They're selling you a pipe dream. But you can create a career. How about that? Let's think about this. You can create a career and you can do this professionally for decades. Okay? Add more money. So here's the thing, right? Add more money. Add, oops. Add, add more money somehow. And add time. This is what you need to do. The more time you have, the more money you'll make eventually. Okay? And as you go through time and you do your, let's say you average 5% month over month. By the way, you're doing something like 80% return on investment or 75% return on investment every year, year after year. You're destroying the stock market. Okay? The average... Okay, the average commodities trading advisor in the United States trading more than, I think it's $100 million. 1.9% per month. So if you're doing 4%, you're doubling the best professional traders in America. So, so listen to this message. If you're trying to make 30%, Per month, you're mentally deranged. You're you're so over leveraged. It's like riding a motorcycle across a tight wire. All you have to do is prove month over month over month over month for years you that you're producing, let's say, four percent or even three percent. If you average three percent. That means your, your typical year is somewhere around 50% return on investment. Better than the best stock markets in history. And you're doing it every year. Money will rain out of the sky as long as you have low volatility. Now, if you go from like negative 10 to plus 22 to negative 8 to negative 3 to plus 45 
and then at the end you're like, see, I average 5%? No, you have to have low volatility. So you're, you're, you should be able to hand your three-year year track record to somebody, and it looks like this. Okay, so you got January, February, Mar, April, May, June, July, August, Sep, uh, October, November, Dece. Okay, and you got year one, year two, year three. Okay, cool. This is what your history should look like three years from now. Uh, uh, four, three, four, three, four, two, two, um, one, six, seven, five, two. Okay. And then some variation of this. Okay, and you hand that some to somebody, money will just rain out of the sky. That's it. That's all I'm asking you to do. And you're saying, well, Wayne, that takes me three years. I got to get rich quick. You're not going. It's not going to happen, son. You don't have what it takes. If you got to get rich quick, you don't have what it takes. You have no patience and likely no discipline. It ain't going to happen. Sorry. This takes patience. This takes discipline. This takes consistency. This takes planning and control. It's very doable if you have patience and discipline. If you have a ridiculous, sickening work ethic, you got a chance at this. If you don't have a ridiculous, sickening work ethic, if you don't have patience and discipline, it's not going to happen. How many people agree with me? Okay. So imagine you did something like this. Now play with the numbers. You started with, uh, I got to change the color here. Change it. So imagine you got this Excel spreadsheet and you started with 1,000. Or you started with 2,000. Or you started with 10,000. Whatever. And adjust the numbers and see how much money you have at the end. Okay, so if you're doing 6% a month, you're doubling your money every year. So if you start with 10,000, now you have 20,000. Then after 20,000, you got 40,000. And after that, at the end of year three, you have $80,000. And you started with 10 grand. At the end of year four, you have $160,000. And you did it in four years. You can get a nice used uh, Murcia Lago. Now you can feel like a superstar. Now beautiful women are going to be attracted to you. <laughs> eh. 
Sure. For sure, dreamer. Dreamer. Okay. So, and then you bust that out over time. You're like, dude, this adds up to millions. Yeah. Well, if you're patient and disciplined and you do the work and you're consistent. Just do the math. Just bust out a sp Excel spreadsheet. Do the math. Do the math. Do the math. Do the math. Okay. Cool. So I got to run. I'll see you guys tomorrow. If you're in my live trading groups, the links are below if you're going to join. But we're going to meet at 5 p.m. So tonight we are going to do trades worth at least 99 pips. Or we throw them back into the into the water because they're not big enough for us. And then on Thursday at the swing trading group, we're going to set up trades worth at least 300 pips. So that's uh, the next uh, 24 hours, it looks like. So peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Thank you for being a subscriber. Thank you for being patient and disciplined. <laughs> Thank you for being... Uh, for your ridiculous, sickening work ethic. I know you're working hard. I know you're driving for success. It's only a matter of time. I've known many of you guys for over 10 years. I know you have what it takes. And I will see you guys uh, later tonight and then tomorrow. Uh, links to resources are under the video, to the book, to Trader's Way, our sponsor, to the training courses, to the super discount to everything I can possibly do to help you is all down there. So I'll see you tomorrow. Peace on earth.